Hello everyone, well I've been so busy lately in the real world that I've missed some of the news or drama about uh, Linux. So in this video we'll be discussing Linux Mint 20 which is codenamed Uliana. So there is discussion here about the usage of snap packages. <laughs> That's a polite way of saying it really. So back in Ubuntu 1910 the deb to snap transition began. So Canonical decided to package Chromium only as a snap package. So if you attempted to install the deb build of Chromium, it would install the snap build instead. Now this was quite obvious if you use the command line, but if you used a GUI package manager, then I'm not sure it was entirely that obvious really. But anyway, back in 1910, things weren't really as good as they are now with snaps. The, the, the applications weren't integrated as well with the desktop. Anyway, look at it this way. This is Kubuntu 20.04. I'm using the Snap version of Chromium here, which is what you're looking at in this video, and it integrates perfectly. Same with the GNOME desktop. Not necessarily the same with all the desktops, but yeah. KDE Plasma and GNOME, the Snap packages are integrating really well. So as the end user, I don't care. And Snaps have an added security benefit as well. But I suppose we should look at uh, Linux Mint and how they... Uh, do you seem to disagree with uh, Canonical on a few points? I mean, let's think about the Unity desktop, the use of GNOME 3. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this is a polite way of saying it, of a, a disagreement. But yeah, they, they went uh, their own path, and they certainly have done. And of course, they've got every right to go on their own path and use whichever package manager they want, because this is exactly what they're doing. They are forcing the end user to go down the route of using dev packages and are actually preventing the use of snap packages. But let's read up on what Clem has said. We heard your queries on the topic of snap, and this topic is very important to us, and we already explained our position last year. As you install apps updates, snap becomes a requirement for you to continue to use Chromium and installs itself behind your back. As I mentioned earlier in the video, that is not the case if you use terminal to install the package. This breaks one of the major worries many people have had when Snap was announced as a promise from its developers that it would never replace apt. Uh, okay, I can't remember that. A self-installing Snap store which overwrites part of our apps package base is a complete no-no. It's something we have to stop, and it could mean the end of Chromium updates and access to the Snap store in Linux Mint. A year later, in the Ubuntu 20.04 package base, the Chromium package is indeed empty and acting without your consent as a backdoor by connecting your computer to the Ubuntu store. Applications in this store cannot be patched or pinned. You can't audit them, hold them, modify them, or even point Snap to a different store. You have as much empowerment with this as if you're using proprietary software, i.e. none. This is in effect similar to a commercial proprietary solution but with two major differences, it runs as root and it stores itself without asking you. <laughs> okay, I'll address as uh, much as I can with uh, my level of knowledge that I have of snaps. The initial install does have to be carried out as root and you have to provide your password for this. But ongoing updates? Hmm, okay, I'm not sure if they're actually done as root or the local user. But yes, there is the point that you can't hold them at a particular version they do have control in using edge, beta, or a stable release. But so what if I can't sit at a particular version? I suppose you have the argument that one version might break on your system and it would be nice to roll back to a different version. Well, one feature of Snaps is that it checks the application does work still after the update, and if it doesn't, then it will automatically roll back. So you do have two versions of the Snap package on your system, the latest and the previous release. Although how much control you have of using either one of those, not entirely sure. I've never needed to look into that situation. I suppose it is a simplification for the end user. You don't have to worry about what version you're on, you don't have to worry about holding at a set package. Now I have had to fix the version numbers on dev packages due to dependency issues. But snaps are supposed to get away from that in that they're packaging all the dependencies in one application, in one package. Is there a need for all this? I suppose, yes, if you're an advanced user and you're picky about having a particular version of an application on your system, but for the average everyday user, this is a null issue. 
Anyway, moving along, first I'm happy to confirm that Linux Mint 20, like previous Mint releases, will not ship with any snaps or SnapD installed. Second, to address the situation, we'll do exactly what we said we would. In Linux Mint 20, Chromium won't be an empty package which installs snaps behind your back. It'll be an empty package which tells you why it's empty and tells you where to look to get Chromium yourself. To what? Um, okay. Pretty bad from an end user perspective. Uh, but um, the next point. In Linux Mint 20, apt will forbid snap from getting installed. I have never seen anything like this. The only reason I've seen packages be prevented from installed are because of dependency issues, not that it forbids a package from being installed. You'll still be able to install it yourself and we'll document this in the release notes, but by default, apt won't allow repository packages from doing this on your behalf. I can't get over this point of forbidding a package from being installed, and for what valid grounds? Because the developer doesn't like snaps? Is there a security implication? No. So what? What is the real reason for this? I can understand the reason for forbidding the end user from doing something that's stupid and going to actively damage their system, like formatting the root drive, deleting sudo, changing permissions of all files to zero. Like, you know, that would actively damage the system and you would want to prevent the end user from doing that. But forbidding them from installing a package, I, I can't get over this. I, I can't get over this. And I'm sorry if I'm banging on this point for way too long. Anyway, a couple more things in this story. So let's, let's take a look. There's this article from ZDNet, which is dated the 8th of June 2020, although I'm sure they're citing sources that are quite a lot older in this story. But anyway, Ubuntu opens the door to talking with Linux Mint about snaps. So Canonical has stated that they designed snaps based on a number of principles which include security, ease of use, and to reduce fragmentation in the Linux ecosystem. Outside of Ubuntu, Linux Mint has the highest number of users across all compatible distributions. These users have chosen to install snaps based on the reasons outlined above, among others. We appreciate and encourage their adoption of snaps available in the Snapcraft store. We would welcome Linux Mint to engage with us and our community to discuss such topics as we do with other distributions and work together going forward. As for the snap, at the heart of the conflict, the Canonical spokesperson said, regarding Chromium, the decision was made to ship as a snap in Ubuntu 19.10 release. Prior to that, we communicated this and the reasons why in a blog post. The status of Chromium remains the same in the recent Ubuntu 20.04 LTS release as it did in Ubuntu 19.10. Chromium in a snap has been available for several years now. It currently has over 200,000 users. It's clearly popular. Alan Pope, Canonical's community manager from Ubuntu Engineering Services, said Canonical always knew that moving Chromium from installing via an apt-compatible dev package to a snap package wasn't a trivial decision, but it felt it had good reasons to make this move. So Chromium is a very popular web browser, the fully open source counterpart to Google Chrome. On Ubuntu, Chromium is not the default browser, and the package resides in the universe section of the archive. The universe contains community-maintained software packages. Despite that, the Ubuntu desktop team is committed to packaging and maintaining Chromium because a significant number of users rely on it. Maintaining a single release of Chromium is a significant time investment for Ubuntu, sorry, Ubuntu desktop team working with the Ubuntu security team to deliver updates each stable release. As the team supports numerous stable releases of Ubuntu, the amount of work is compounded. Comparing this workload to other Linux distributions which have single supported rolling releases misses the nuance of supporting multiple long-term support, LTS and non-LTS releases. Google releases a new version of Chromium every six weeks, with typically several minor versions to address security vulnerabilities in between. Every new stable version has to be built for each supported Ubuntu release. And here's where it is a bit old, I think, because they're talking about 1904 and 1910. So yeah, anyways, all the LTS releases, the three LTS releases, the 64, 32-bit ARM HF and ARM64 builds, Ensuring Chromium even builds, let alone runs, and older releases, such as 16.04 can be challenging, as upstream project often uses new compiler features that are not available in older releases. 
In contrast, a snap needs to be built once per architecture, and it will run on all systems that support SnapD. This covers all Ubuntu releases, including 14.04 with extended support maintenance, as well as other distributions like Debian, Fedora, Mint, and Manjaro. So Mr. Pope summarized, since Chromium is not the default browser in Ubuntu, it has a lower impact by virtue of having a smaller user base. Snaps are explicitly designed to support high frequency of stable updates. The upstream project has three release channels, stable, beta, and dev, and that maps nicely to SnapD's channels, which are stable, beta, and edge. This enables users to easily switch releases of Chromium or indeed have multiple versions installed in parallel. Having the application strictly confined as an added layer of security on top of the browser's already robust sandboxing mechanism. So you can see the arguments for having it are mainly around the time taken to build and make sure a package works for the different supported releases. And then going on through the article, there's the argument of fragmentation in Linux. So yes, that is a big thing. We have far too many desktops and far too many different package managers. Anyway, it does seem very weird about the uh, decision with snaps and uh, what Linux Mint are deciding. There is a fix for actually allowing snaps onto the system. And I'm sure this will be documented in the final release because at the moment it is a beta. So you know, I'm not here reviewing the operating system, which I know at this point in the video I've not even looked at yet. Here's a quick look at the situation. If you open the software manager and type in Chromium for Chromium browser, it says this is a dummy package. It can be safely removed. Chromium browser is no longer available as a package in the repository, but only available, but only as a snap. Linux Mint does not support snap. It will not let packages install snap behind your back. You can download and update Chromium directly via chromium.org. <laughs> download Chromium. They literally want you to go and install Chromium another way. So you don't want me to use Chromium? What, would you rather I use Google Chrome instead? <laughs> I suppose you could say they're both as uh, bad as each other, but uh, I would at least say Chromium is a bit better than uh, using Chrome. Uh, and as far as SnapD goes, um, yeah, there's actually nothing about it here, is there? So if you try and uh, if you try and find a package, so yeah, Snap command not found. And if we do sudo apt install snapd, uh, we'll get package snapd is not available, but referred to by another package. This may mean the package is missing or has been obsoleted or is only available from another source. And if we look in the folder of slash etc slash apt slash preferences dot d at the file of no snap dot pref, you can see this is what is preventing snaps from being installed. And there is the link to the uh, article we spoke about earlier in the video. So if we remove that, and then try and install snapd, then yes, I can. So that was a discussion about what Linux Mint are doing to actively prevent snaps from being installed in the latest release of Linux Mint version 20. Thanks for watching. See you later.